diameter is the distance across the center of a circle. Radius is the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the outside of the circle. Radius is also the distance from the center of an arc to any point on the outside of the arc. Circumference is the measurable distance around the outside of a circle. If we were to cut this circle at any point and lay it out straight and then measure the length of the line, this would be the circumference. The datum is the reference point or the zero position. It describes the point where the X, Y, and Z axis of a machine can be set for a workpiece. All dimensions on a print require a datum. Think of it as the starting position. Every single feature on the part that you will manufacture would have a location from that datum. In this diagram, you can see that the Z datum is on the top of the workpiece. The Y datum is at the front of the workpiece, and the X datum is at the left side of the workpiece. Notice where the three axes meet at the datum. This is the X, Y, Z, zero position or datum. A tangent is a very common term in manufacturing. A tangent is a line that touches the edge of a curve. Any time a circle or an arc comes into contact with the surface of a line, they will only meet at one point. This point is the tangent point. A very interesting thing to note is that when a radius is drawn from the center of the circle or arc to the tangent point, it will create a 90 degree angle. This is an important piece of information for us when trying to solve geometric problems on a print. What does it mean when lines are parallel? Lines are parallel when they are always an equal distance apart, running in the same direction and never ever crossing. What about perpendicular lines? Lines are perpendicular to one another when they meet at a right angle or at 90 degrees. Auxiliary views are used when the true shape of a surface or a feature cannot be described accurately in one of the main views. We are already familiar with the three main views in orthographic projection, the top view, the front view, and the right side view. In this example here, Notice that the angled surface in the front view is the only view that describes any part of that feature accurately. All we can tell by this surface is the length of that angled surface. In the top and the right side view, this slanted surface is foreshortened or it is seen not straight on the perspective is skewed. An auxiliary view is created so that that surface can be described accurately and seen in its true shape. The auxiliary view then describes what that surface actually looks like if you were to look straight on it. You will often see a call out on a print for a boss, especially when working with castings like cast iron or cast aluminum. 
A boss is a small cylindrical surface projected from the surface of the part. Well, why is a boss called out on a print? What is its purpose or function? The boss is a finished surface usually made to accommodate a fastener. A boss is also created to provide strength to a feature. By having this raised boss off a piece of cast material also allows us to cut a minimal amount of material to create a flat spot rather than having to cut the entire surface of a part to create a flat spot for a bolt we would just cut a small surface area to accommodate the bolt itself. A pad is similar to a boss. The main difference being that a pad is not circular in shape, but it is still created for the same reasons as a boss. It is often created to accommodate a bolt head, and in this case, a sliding bolt head. The finished surface requires us to cut a minimal amount of material on the top of the pad without having to cut the entire surface of the casting. A pad also provides strength, just like a boss. A chamfer is identifiable as a straight cut that removes a sharp corner. A chamfer can be created by using a file or a pedestal grinder or by some other means in the machining process. A fillet is not linear in shape, like a chamfer, but radial, and can be found both on inside or outside edges to provide sharp edge removal. On the inside of a corner, a fillet can be used to add strength to a part. Notice on the left side of this illustration, the two edges that come into contact meet at a 90 degree corner. This creates a possible fracture point, especially if this part will be heat treated. A fillet, if allowed to be added to this corner, will provide strength by eliminating that possible fracture point. Fillets cannot always be added to the inside corners of features as many parts are designed to mate or fit together and a fillet will make it difficult for parts to mate properly. Many prints call out features that are needed to accommodate different types of fasteners. A counterbore is a hole cut to a specific depth to accommodate the width and the height of a bolt head. A countersink is a tapered surface cut into a hole to accommodate a machine bolt. Sometimes countersinks are used to remove the burr or sharp edge around the top of a hole. A spot face is like a shallow counterbore. It is created to accommodate the width and height of a low head bolt or just to provide a flat surface for a bolt head. Tapers are often called out on engineered drawings. What exactly is a taper? A taper is a uniform change in diameter measured along its axis. In this example, the part tapers from 25 units in diameter down to 15 units in diameter over a 60 unit length. Therefore, the part tapers by 10 units in diameter. This part then tapers 0.167 units in diameter for every unit of length. Clearance is a very important term that we must understand as manufacturers and machinists. Clearance refers to the amount of space that exists between mating parts. Imagine a shaft and a hole are manufactured to fit together to provide a specific function on a part. 
The shaft is manufactured to 1.00 inches in diameter and the hole is manufactured to 1.01 inches in diameter. When the shaft, shown in green on the right side of this illustration, is fitted to the hole, which is shown in blue in the right side of this illustration, they should make according to the callouts on the print. When the shaft is fitted to the hole, in this situation, there is decimal 01 inches of clearance or decimal 005 inches of clearance per side. Tolerance is another very important term that we must understand. Tolerance is the permissible variation in the size of a part. Every feature that is created is given a specific size. Since it is impossible to make parts and features to exact numbers, let alone measure them, each dimension that is given will include a tolerance. In other words, each dimension will describe acceptable limits of change in the required dimension. For example, look at the dimension called out on the hole and the shaft here. The basic size of the shaft is 1.00 inches. However, the tolerance on it is plus or minus 0 0.002 thousandths of an inch. This means that this part is allowed to be 0 0.002 bigger than the one inch call out on the print or 0 0.002 inches smaller than the one inch call out on the print. Therefore, this shaft, if manufactured between 0.998 inches in diameter and 1.002 inches in diameter, it will be acceptable. The mating hole, likewise, is also given a plus or minus 0.002 thousandths of an inch tolerance. Tolerances are included so that parts will still mate as required. In this case, as long as the shaft and the hole are manufactured to the tolerances given, the parts will mate with clearance according to the manufacturer's requirements. Allowance is another very important term to comprehend. Allowance is the intentional difference in the size of mating parts. If the shaft were made at its maximum size of 1.000 inches, and the hole were made at its minimum size of 1.001 inches, then there would be a 0.001 inch clearance between the hole and the shaft. If the shaft were made at its smallest size, 0.998 inches, and the hole at its largest size, 1.003 inches, then there would be five thousandths or 0 0.005 inches of clearance between the hole and the shaft. Allowance is attributed to assure that mating parts will fit how they are designed to fit as long as they are manufactured to the limits of size indicated. Maximum and least material condition are best understood when you comprehend that the key word is material. When the shaft in the diagram here is manufactured at its maximum material condition, that would mean that it is made with the most amount of material allowed, thus increasing the size or the amount of material. The shaft would be at its maximum material condition then when it measures 1.000 inches. The hole is created at its maximum material condition when it is created leaving the most amount of material. Therefore, when the hole is manufactured at its smallest size, 1.001 inches, then there is more material left behind. That is maximum material condition for a hole. The shaft is manufactured at its least material condition when it is made at its smallest limit of size, in this case 0.998 inches. 
the whole is at its least material condition when it is cut to its largest size of 1.002 inches. Because the hole is cut bigger, we are actually removing more material. This is why the hole at its largest size is at its least material condition. Engineer drawings often call out features that must be created with angles. Angles are typically shown as you see here in the bottom left corner. This is what an angle symbol would look like on a print. And along with this angle symbol would be the size of the angle that we must create or observe. In this case, the angle call out on the print is 35 degrees, 15 minutes, and 10 seconds. It's not very often we must cut an angle with such precision. But it is important to understand how to interpret this call out. There are 360 degrees in a circle. If we were to draw a ray at zero degrees and move that ray around the circle, new angles are created. Sometimes the angle that has to be cut must be more accurate than whole degrees. So we must understand what minutes and seconds are and how they fit into angle callouts. Every single degree in a circle can be divided into 60 pieces or 60 minutes. So one minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree. Every single minute can be divided into 60 pieces as well, or 60 seconds. So one second is 1 60th of a minute. There are 3,600 seconds in a single degree, and there are 21,600 minutes in 360 degrees.